For this mini lesson, we are going to learn about Dadaism. Dada is a style of art from the late 1910s that was born out of the chaos of World War I. Because the world didn't make sense, the artists decided they would make art that didn't make sense. They often made art that was considered anti-art, or that insulted the art world. They thought the art world took art too seriously during this turbulent time of a world war. How can these gallery owners and art sellers still sell beautiful works of art when the world outside is so dangerous and scary? The Dadaists were critical of the systems of art and of what people considered art or not art. Their art was more about what was going on in your head. The thought process was more important than the product. Sometimes there was no art at all, but instead a performance like this. Or poetry like this. Sometimes they would make art by picking words at random out of a bag. One of the most famous Dada artists was Marcel Duchamp. He created what he called ready-mades. These are ordinary manufactured items that have been selected by an artist and displayed in some way. The thought was that if an artist puts something in a museum and says, this is art, shouldn't we consider it art? The artist made it and the artist makes art, right? It is a confusing, hard-to-answer question that made the art world in the 1900s implode. Some art critics loved this work, but many of them hated it. Like this work again by Duchamp titled Fountain, he submitted it to an art show that had promoted itself with the idea that we will display everything that is submitted to us. But when he brought in this urinal he bought at a hardware store and scribbled a fake name, Armut, on it, they refused to put it in the art show because they said it wasn't art. You can kind of think of what Duchamp was doing as pranking the art world. He wanted to poke fun at the art world and make people laugh. He wanted us to see that art can be way more than just paintings and statues. And that influence of the Dadaist artists is still very much felt today. Just a few years ago, some teenagers in San Francisco wanted to play a prank on visitors in a museum by placing a pair of glasses on the ground to see if people thought it was a work of modern art. And it worked. The museum even went so far as to tweet the boys, comparing them to Marcel Duchamp. Following the urinal incident, Duchamp released this press release that I think perfectly sums up what Dada art does. It says, Whether Mr. Mutt with his own hands made the fountain or not has no importance. He chose it. He took an ordinary article of life, placed it so that its useful significance disappeared under the new title and point of view created a new thought for that object. By taking the urinal away from its usual location and taking away its usual function, Duchamp made a new life for this object. He turned it into a new idea, a new thought, and isn't that what all art does? It takes objects and materials and turns them into something new? We take paint and canvas and turn them into paintings? We take clay and turn them into cups? It is our job as artists to take something conventional, whether it be paint, clay, or manufactured household objects, and turn them into something different. Something called art. And that's exactly what we are going to do for this mini assignment. We're going to make ready-mades. Making a ready-made, as you can imagine, is pretty simple, because all you're doing is finding objects, arranging them in a specific way, naming it, and there you go, there's your art. Dada artists liked the absurd, they liked things that were silly, they liked things that were total nonsense, they liked gibberish, and that's what our ready-mades are going to be. Here are the rules. First, gather one to three objects from around your house. Make sure they're school appropriate, no weapons or anything like that. Second, arrange them somewhere in a way that looks visually pleasing to you. They can be stacked on top of each other, they can be near each other, or they could be spread apart. Third, Take a picture. Fourth, name your art. And fifth, write a short description about it. Let's go through an example together. My first step was to find my objects. 
I looked all around my house, in the living room, in my kitchen, in the basement. I wanted to choose objects that jumped out at me for one reason or another, things that caught my attention, that were interesting to look at. I ended up gathering a pair of old shoestrings, a VHS tape from an old t-ball game when I was a little kid, and this umbrella. I like this umbrella because it has a duck on the handle. Once you have your objects, you have to arrange them in a way that you find interesting. As you can see, I played around with my items for quite a while before I found an arrangement that I thought was interesting. Take your time. This part is supposed to be fun. It's just your chance to play around and put things together and see what they look like. When you're finally happy, like I was here, you can take a picture. Next, you need to name your art. And just like the Dadaists, we're gonna let random chance name our art for us. What I mean by that is you're gonna need a magazine or a newspaper, something that you can cut up with scissors. I found this little section, it's a review of a CD, and I cut it up so that all of the words were separate. I recommend finding something that has bigger words than this. It was pretty hard to cut out and it was really hard to keep everything straight. But when I finally cut out enough words that I was happy with, I mixed up all the words and I chose three. And that's how I named my art. The last part is to write a description. On the assignment, I've included a Google Doc with some sentence starters. You're going to use those sentence starters to make up a description of your artwork. Here's the one that I wrote for evokes some soul sound. My artwork evokes some soul sound is a sculpture about the importance of staying dry, saving your old memories and tying your shoes. The VHS tape represents the past and how we need to protect it. The upside down umbrella has the face of a duck, and the duck looks off into the distance, the future. The shoestrings connecting the duck and the VHS represents that the past, the future, and the present are all connected. The title relates to the artwork because the sound of a duck's quack is the sound of my soul. Just like the Dadaists, the description is kinda nonsensical. Once you've filled out the sentence starters on the Google Doc, and you've uploaded your photo, you can submit this assignment. Have fun!